welcome everyone. In this video we are going to see a classic game. This was played between Lasker and Bauer 1889. Lasker started with f4. This is Bear's opening. It's not very popular these days. However, it's a more or less interesting option for white to surprise your opponent. However, there is a very dangerous line here that black can play and I really don't like it for white. And talking about e5 and d6 here is a gambit, but in these positions black gets some good situations and actually I think is the main line to play against this for black. Well, in this moment, uh, Bauer played d5 and the game continued with e3, b3, e6, bishop b2, just developing the pieces, knight f3. In this kind of structure, it is very interesting to try to use this outpost here for white. White castles, black castles, knight e2, c5, knight g3. White is preparing and is taking the pieces to the king side because in some point they can start some attack. Look at the bishops, they are very strong here, pointing there. And also the pawn, the knights, the queen is ready to go in some moment to h5 and also the rook can go over f3 to h3 or maybe g3. Black played queen c7, knight e5, knight takes, bishop takes, queen c6, queen e2 connecting the rooks, a6 protecting b5, and knight h5. And this is an important moment because usually if we are attacking we don't exchange pieces. We are going to need our pieces to attack. But Lasker plays here knight h5. So how do we understand this? Well, this knight here on f6 is very important. Is protecting h7 but also is controlling some important squares around the king side and the center and also blocking this bishop. So that's right, we don't exchange pieces when we are attacking. However, if there is an important defensive piece, we will need to, to exchange it. So the attack will be stronger. Knight takes knight. And now Lasker started a beautiful combination. This is known as Lasker's double bishop sacrifice. It's a typical idea of attack to the king in the castling. So let's see. It starts with bishop takes a7, queen takes knight now, and then bishop takes g7. The idea is that you will have destroyed the pawns in the castling and then between queen and rook, because the rook is ready to come, um, then there will be some checkmate positions. In the game he took the bishop but we need to analyze some other options. White is threatening right now queen h8 mate. So what would have happened if black played f6? Well then white should play bishop h6 threatening queen g6 or maybe queen g4 and then queen g7. So after this move, it could be winning for white. That's why f6 doesn't work. But also, we need to analyze what would have happened after f5. In this situation, bishop a6 is not so strong. I think black could play rook f6 or something. Uh, then the best move is going to be bishop e5. Threatening queen g6 mate. Black should play something like rook f6, but not rook f3. 
and this is winning. Uh, we have bishop, queen, and rook attacking the king, and it's completely open here, and it is going to be winning very soon for white here. After king takes g7, then Lasker play queen g4, king a7, and of course now rook f3, threatening checkmate. This is almost winning. Black found e5, interesting. Now after rook h3, black could play queen a6. Rook takes queen, king takes rook. And if we analyze the material, we will see that white has a queen and two pawns versus rook and two bishops. So it's not very clear. It could be more or less even here. But actually there is a very strong move for white that is going to make all this combination work. If we look at black's position, we can find some small problems. And this bishop is hanging, and also this bishop is hanging. That means that after queen d7, there is a double threat, and white is going to get a bishop there. Bishop f6, queen takes bishop, and now we have queen, two pawns, versus rook and bishop. And we are also going to get some other pawns here, also black in looks very bad so this is completely winning for white here let's see the end of the game he just improved his pieces and in some other point found a small combination here he sacrificed the exchange but now he's threatening this rook the only move is king e8 and now this rook is also hanging so he can play queen h8 and queen g7. And well, he continued played here, Bauer, I mean, but uh, it's completely lost. And now queen takes pawn, and he resigned it here. So, the most important thing about this game is to show you the double bishop sacrifice played by Lasker. It's a typical at idea of attack. And you can find it in your own games, uh, just like uh, the Greek gift sacrifice. So, you know, if your opponent has three pawns in the base, uh, you have two bishops pointing g7 and h7, your queen is ready to go to h5, and the rook is ready to go to the king side and create some good threats there, then don't forget this idea of the double bishop sacrifice or Lasker's sacrifice. Uh, maybe it's going to work in your games. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you think this was more or less good, give me a like. That would help me so much. I hope you keep progressing at chess. So leave a comment, share, and I hope to see you soon.